Howdy, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about 9 to 1 unun antennas and whether you need a counterpoise or not. So stay tuned and let's get started. So we're going to start off by taking a look at this document from IRCHI. It's an emergency amateur radio club in Hawaii. And um, this is instructions they have for a kit or a do-it-yourself 9 to 1 unun and then an NFED random wire antenna. And here are some of the parts list. We're not going to go through the build today. We're Today we're just going to talk about whether counterpoises are needy, needed or not. And my buddy built one of these 9 to 1 antennas. And I was t talking to him while he was setting it up and tuning it and everything. And we talked a lot about counterpoises. And I wanted to share the results with you. But first, it's very simple. It's a trifilar or three wires wrapped nine times around a toroid. In the example in this instruction set, it is a T... I think it's a 120 mix two, which is powdered iron. For the project, my buddy used a mix 61 ferrite core, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But it's a pretty simple build. And down here, it talks about your antenna wire. And here it says wires longer than 60 feet may have excessive impedance for some tuners to properly match. Wires shorter than 24 feet may not radiate as effectively, so they recommend a 30 foot. Um, insulated 18 gauge stranded wire. Now when I built mine I used 35.5 feet which is pretty common but uh, down here there's some some conversation around whether you need a, a counterpoise and here it says that uh, best performance is achieved with a coax of 16 feet or longer with the coax shield providing a counterpoise function. I'm not a fan of that so I typically use a one-to-one -one balance choke right at the feed point for the antenna. It says additional counterpoise is usually not required in this design, although the lower wing nut provides a convenient counterpoise connector if needed. And I just read this part right here. So here's a website that I reference on the channel all the time, and it's best random wire antenna lengths. And these are the, the lengths that you should not use. And then here in green are the ones that you should use. 29, 35.5, all the way up to 423. Now, uh, my buddy used a 43-foot antenna wire. Here it says 41. 43 is not listed up here as a, as a culprit, as they call it. But uh, I did want to say 44 is. One thing to note about antenna wire is that you have a, a condition called velocity factor. And that is the travel of the signal through the wire. Velocity factor can vary between different types of cable, and then you have to adjust for velocity factor when you build your antenna. So the fact that his antenna is 43 feet long is not a concern to me. Here is another link that I'll include in the description below. And this is from Palomar Engineers, and they talk about uh, the different types of ferrite mix. And as I mentioned, my buddy used a ferrite mix for his toroid core. He used 61, which is right here. And what I wanted to point out, the last column, you know, 1 to 300 megahertz, is what they recommend for a wideband transformer if you're using a mix 61. And that would cover what my buddy was doing. So this isn't a debate if you need a counterpoise or not. It's just sharing an experience. So with the 43-foot antenna in a sloper configuration at about 60 degrees, this is the first scan, and you can see that the SWR is pretty much off the chart in the lower bands and never really gets better than 6 to 1. This was being fed with RG8X coax at a length of about 30 feet, and this is not an ideal scenario. So in talking with my buddy, we said, hey, let's uh, slap a 17-foot counterpoise on there and see what we get. So this is the sweep with the counterpoise attached. I want to keep in mind that this counterpoise was attached and laying on the ground in a non-linear uh, or straight fashion. It was just coiled up at my buddy's feet. And you can immediately see that we have lower SWR, but we still don't have resonance in the ham bands. And I'm probably using the word resonance incorrectly, but we don't have a matched antenna in the ham bands. So we decided to play around and adjust the counterpoise a little bit. I also want to mention that with a 9 to 1 unun, the expectation is that you will still need to use a tuner. So you're not going to get 1 to 1 matching across the bands. But what you want to get is matched close enough that the tuner will not have to work hard to go ahead and make it have an efficient match. This is with the counterpoise stretched out at a 90 degree angle from the antenna, 
running off the side of the Unun. The Unun was about two and a half feet off the ground. And what we have here is that we have matchable SWR across all hand bands. It's a little high on 80, 60, and, uh, and 40, but it's very workable, very serviceable. So let's take a look at all three sweeps together. Green is no counterpoise. The blue or cyan is the counterpoise coiled up at uh, my buddy's feet. And then the purple is what I call that color. Maybe it's magenta. I don't know. Would be the counterpoise stretched out at a right angle. And uh, that's not too bad. So this is another interesting chart. And I'll call it maroon. That maroon was the coax running straight underneath of the antenna. The green would be it running at that right angle that we spoke about. So even your counterpoint placement matters. Your counterpoise effectively becomes part of your antenna system. So not only do you want to use one, you want to make sure that it is pointing or aligned in a good direction. And then this would be our before and after picture. The green would be antenna up, no counterpoise. The magenta or purple color would be the counterpoise installed at a right angle and orientated correctly. So it does make a pretty big difference. I'm going to continue to use counterpoises. Oh, in case I forgot, the counterpoise in this case was 17 feet in length. I want to say thanks to my buddy Thump for letting me use these pictures for this video. I want to say thanks to everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again, everybody.